morning worship service. We started earlier. We usually start all the way with you. That's all right. The weather that laid us in a lot of ways. So, let's continue to pray for everybody who's here. Thank all y'all for being here on this morning. If not, I'm going to go ahead and mute you, and we'll get started with our service for today. Let us pray. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for having us be here. 
waiting for this moment of time, this space of time to right now. But we're here in the midst of you. We're here in the midst of you and those who are visiting with us. We're here because you decided to do the best part. And that's why I'm coming here to wish you a spirit of you. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. You heard the hearts of those who stood and you spoke. So I have a prayer for their loved ones, for their children, uh, for those who lost loved ones. You pray for us. You come pray and you comfort us. You give us what we need to deal with. Uh, what we are, all that we have to deal with with their loss. Come pray and ask them for uh, those who are sick and shut in, those who are sick and shut in. Then with those who break the weather, come to this place of worship. Thank you. Thank you for being able to come uh, to see our brothers and sisters, to see how they do it. Also to fellowship them, one fellowship, one with another. Thank you for this day. Thank you for all the days of our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
have it, better sing. As I journey through the land, sing it as I go. Pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Many arrows takes my soul from without within. But my Thank you. 
720 if you have a copy of the newer book, 720 if you have a copy of the newer book, and it'll be 176 if you have a copy of the older book.
Amen. All sorts of things are being said. I just wish and pray that somebody would take time to listen to God. Mm -hmm. God speaks to us in many yes, ways. Yes. And I say that because if you woke up this morning, I want you to know you woke up this morning because God said, wake up. Yes. Amen, somebody. Yes. Because if you would have been dead, mm -hmm. amen, yes. you, you would not have been here amen. on this morning. You would have mm -hmm. not, not, not been kind of on this time side of life. But God touched you. God touched you. I, I don't care what you think. You may think the alarm clock mm -hmm. or, or your cat, your dog. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what you think, but I want you to know you woke up because you were alive. Amen. Mm -hmm. Dead people don't wake up. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but you know, I look at movies. <laughs> and every while I look at a movie where somebody rises from the grave. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I've been to graveyards before. Uh, I want you to know something. If I ever go to a graveyard and somebody get up, uh, I'm getting out. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm gone. Yeah. I ain't staying in there. Uh, but I do know uh, one of my preacher friends with his little boy, he told me his little boy was young, uh, uh, only a lad himself. He was passing by a graveyard and the boy Ask him, Daddy, how many people you think are dead <laughs> in that graveyard? His daddy responded, I hope all of them. <laughs> 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 Amen. I want you to know something. The graveyard for this body is a spinal resting place. But the meat inside this body. Yes, the graveyard is not my final resting place. Yes, That's why you heard me say some things that you may thought I didn't know what I was talking about. When I say you can wake up dead. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 You understand? Yeah. You're going to wake up. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But you might not wake up on this type side, side of life, but you're going to wake up somewhere. Oh, yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. So you yeah. can wake up, but this body is dead. Yeah. I'm glad I can see you because I know you ain't dead. Amen. Amen. But I also know that you are blessed. Yes. You are yes. blessed because somebody else would like to be where you are. Yes. And they Amen. could not be here this morning. Amen. Amen. Yesterday, we had some sad news. Matter of fact, um, we stepped outside and I saw about five police cars at our next door neighbor's house. And my wife uh, went up to the gate and asked them what was going on. And they told her that our next door neighbor. Miss Edith had passed away. Uh, I quickly, my wife would tell you, I quickly yelled out a, a, a sound uh, because it was just a few days ago we actually went by the house to talk to her while she was outside and my wife went back to talk to her again. It just show you how fast things happen. Uh, and then uh, our son Timothy came home from work and he went to see her. I'm, I'm just so glad that I can say sometimes God does some great things in my yes. life. If I say, what do you mean by great things? I'm also glad that I had a chance to go see her. Yes. Amen. Amen. Before she left. And I just say that to tell you this. If you can do something good for somebody, yes, sir. do it when you think about it. Yes. Amen. Don't delay. Don't, don't put it off. Don't put it off. One of the sad stories I do share with you this morning is I had a friend in Generet named Doug Godet. And Doug and I, when I was a generator for a while, well, we, we was thickest, well, they say thickest thieves, <laughs> but, but we wasn't stiff. So they say that. <laughs> but we were, we were tight. Every time you saw me, you saw him during that uh, few years of my life that I was there to generate preaching. And uh, I, I moved on to Lafayette. Well, I first moved back to Houston, I moved on to Lafayette. And then I met him again some years later. Uh, and I told myself, I told myself, I told myself when I saw him, and I saw him in New Iberia at uh, a clinic. Uh, and I told myself when I saw him, I would keep in touch, I would keep in touch. That was my plan. And then a few weeks later, he committed suicide. Uh, that, that destroyed me. Now I only tell you that to tell you, please, when you have a chance to do something for somebody, don't wait, don't delay. 
because part of me still thinks about that yeah. even today yeah. and that's been more than 10 or so years ago uh, so uh, spend your time doing good yeah. and I promise you I promise you you will have very few regrets if you do things that way yeah. if you have your Bibles we're going to turn your Bible to Genesis chapter 1 Genesis chapter 1 My lesson this morning is simply entitled, God. God. I'm using Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1, as a springboard for this lesson. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1. I'm going to ask you to bear with me because I'll be asking some brothers to read for me for today. So brothers, get your Bibles. Get your Bibles ready because when I do mention a scripture, I don't know if I want you to turn there and read it. For me, so we can get through this lesson together, Amen. you and I. Amen. Genesis one and one. Now I'm gonna read that verse. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Let us pray, dear God. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this chance to come before your people. We thank you for this chance to share in a word in the hearing of your people that we're here. That you'll help me to speak, but you'll help them to hear. You'll help me to hear. Help me to respond appropriately to the hearing of your word. And we believe that the appropriate response to your word is trusting and obeying what you say. Help us to trust what you say and help us to obey what you say. We ask that not only for ourselves, but we ask that spirit to permeate in this world. That those who hear your word will trust your word and then they will obey your word. But we pray that we'll be bold enough to tell your word. Thank you so much for this Thank lesson. You. Thank you for those who will listen to this lesson. Thank you for uh, uh, using me to teach this lesson. And I pray you will use me today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God. Capital G. O D. God. Do you know God? What do you know about Him? Mm. Do you think you really know God? Mm. Now somebody say, Preacher, why do you ask us that? Because all around the world this morning, there are people in churches. They went to those edifices and those buildings to worship God. Now, I didn't say know of God. I said know God. Amen. Now, knowing of somebody doesn't mean you know them. Amen, somebody. Amen. Now, let me explain that. I know Barack Obama was our president, but I don't know Barack Obama. Amen. I can't tell you that I'm a fig with him. I can't tell you he knows me. I know him only because he's been the president of the United States. Amen. Now, I'm not saying that about God, but I'm asking you. Do you know God? Do you have a personal relationship with God? Not, not know of God, not have heard of God and decided because you've heard of God and you know God. I'm asking, do, do you know him? Yeah. Well, y'all intimate. In other words, do you talk to him? Yeah. And do you let him talk to you? Amen, somebody. Amen. You see, knowing of God is good, but no, no, look, knowing God is even better. Amen, somebody. Yes. Now, 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 I want to show you something. The God that I'm talking about in this Bible <coughs> is known by many names. Yes. Mm -hmm. I might as well tell you, the word God in English, in English, does not justify mm -hmm. who God is. That's right. It lacks, it lacks in its definition, it lacks in its description. It, it, it lacks in giving me the attributes of who God is because it's just the words G-O-D, capital G-O-D. And I want to say it that way because I want you to know, when you talk about the God of this Bible, yeah. you're not talking about a small G. Right. Amen. Yeah. You're talking about a big G. Amen. 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 Somebody say, brother, you sound like you're trying to be a rapper or something. No, <laughs> no, no. I, I can't rap like that. But yeah. I do want you to know when I talk about God, I have to capitalize his name because right. the Bible lets us know he's God. Uh -huh. Amen. And he's God all by 
himself. And those G-O-Ds are too small, amen, to be him. Now I say that because I want you to know, listen, the Hebrew names of God are numerous in the Bible. There are a lot of names, and each of these names describe a different characteristic, yes. a different attribute of who he is. I need you to hear me. Yes. You see, the Jews did not say, when they talk about God in a particular way or character, just God. No. They gave him another name to show his attributes, to show what he possessed, yes. to show his nature. And so they didn't just use the word God. They met somebody. Amen. They used descriptive phrases that referred to him. And I want you to know some of those descriptive phrases because I want God to be that God to you. Amen. Amen. I want God to be more than a G-O-D God Amen. in your life. Amen. 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 Because in the Bible, he was more than just capital G-O-D. Yes. Yes. Oh, the very first verse in the Bible, uh -huh. Genesis chapter 1. Guess what he's called in the Hebrew? It's not the name God, although you read it as God. Because I just read from the King James Version, did not. Mm -hmm. Here's the Hebrew version we call it. Elohim. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. You see, you can't get that in English. Somebody say, well, what does the word Elohim mean, Brother Harold? Well, the word Elohim, first of all, is a plural noun. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You got me? I need to understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. The word Elohim is bigger than the word just G-O-D. Because it talks about the plurality of who God is. Matter of fact, let me tell you how you can read it. Let's read it first. Now, in the beginning, now let me let you know something. The text is not really concerned about when the beginning was. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. But when there was a beginning, mm -hmm. guess who was there? God. Matter of fact, let me explain the language in the English. Really, you're going to understand it better in the Hebrew. Before there was a beginning, there was God. Amen, somebody. Now, I know that, that should have blew your mind. You don't know how to do that. How can there be a God before there beginning? Because that's who he is. He's the Elohim. That's a priority in that name. That's why I say, what do you mean? Well, watch the text. The earth was on form and born, and God was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved along the face of the water. And God said, let there be light. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Some brother Amen. give me John chapter 1, verse 1. I want to show you something. Because here's what John does. John goes back. John goes back. What John does is to show us how the presence of God fit in Genesis chapter 1 and John chapter 1. I want you to know, when Elohim was saved, way back there a long time ago, in Genesis chapter 1, guess what it was talking about? God in the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now in Genesis chapter 1, and the verse we just read, you'll see what the Bible says, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Yes. And God said, let there be light. Now let me tell you who that was. That was Jesus Christ. Now let me help you understand that. John chapter 1 verse 1. Some brother read for me please. John 1 verse number 1. In the beginning was the word. Read. And the word was with God. Read. And the word was God. Read. He was in the beginning with God. Read. All things are made through him. And without him nothing was made that was made. Now let's go back. Yeah. You realize when the Bible talked about and God said let there be light and there was light? You know who made that light? Jesus Christ. Let me tell you how I know that. Because in John chapter 1, the Bible says there was nothing that was made that was not made without Jesus. Did you go back and read it? Right. So when the Bible talks about God, in the beginning, God, God the Father. Who was God the Father? He was the construction. <laughs> oh. Right. Yeah. yeah. The Holy Spirit administrated it by the words of Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 Jesus said, let there be light. And guess what that was? That was. And there was light. Mm. 
And so the first word for God's Elohim. God in plurality. Now let me explain another verse. Verse 26. And God said, mm -hmm. let us make man uh -huh. in our image. Do y'all realize that we are created in God's image? Yes. The only creature that God created in his image is us. Amen, somebody. Amen. Now, I ain't got time to explain to you all of what that means. But I do want you to know you are more than just this body. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know this body going back to when you die? Yes. To the dirt. Yes. Amen. 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 I'm glad Brother Judge is here, Brother Paul is here. You know, let me tell you the between me and Brother Paul and Brother, Brother Dutch. Our dirt. Yes. They lighter dirt. Mm -hmm. I'm talking dirt. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But we all dirt. Right. Amen. 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 You see, I'm already dead dog. Can I? Yeah. Boy, brother Dutch, if brother Paul die, they gonna turn dog like me. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Why we got race problems, I don't know. We all from the same dust. Yes. Amen. 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 And that's where we shall return. Yes. But there's another part of me yes. that don't die in the grave. Yes. And that's why the Bible says the child of God doesn't weep like he has no hope. Yes. Right. Amen. In other words, when I go to the graveyard, I know something for a fact. I know in the graveyard, there's not where my loved one is. That's just his body. Amen. 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 Now, I'm not trying to stop you from going to the graveyard. You used to visit the graveyard? Do it because, boy, that days I sure think about going to see my son. But he's not there. Oh, no, he's not there. His body's there, but he's not there. And I understand that. Now, now, now watch me. Because here's what, here's what the scriptures tell us. How what did you know about God? Do you know him as Elohim? The ruler? The creator of all things? And so when the Jew wanted to talk about God as creator of all things, they didn't say just God. They said Elohim. Oh, I wish that we could learn some different languages. Because I, I, I just like the fact that God goes by more than one name. Yes. And to distribute his characteristics, they gave him all those names. Who's the God of creation? Elohim! Amen. That's his name. The second time the word is used to define God is Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. Some other read that for me. Genesis, I'm going to get that. Genesis chapter 2. Verse 4. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 4, he's called Yahweh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Lord. Jehovah. Now let me tell you what Jewish history tells us about Yahweh. Yahweh was so holy of a name that guess what they didn't want to call him? Yahweh was too holy to call him by Yahweh. Do you hear what I say? Jewish tradition tells us Yahweh was so holy of a name that about the third century they stopped using the word. They stopped using the word because they said it's too holy to use. And they were scared by using it that they would use the Lord's name in vain. So they stopped using the word Yahweh. Jehovah. Lord. Now, 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 now. Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. So, brother, read it for me, please. These are the generations of the heavens, the heavens and of the earth when they were created. Read. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth. You, 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 you see how the word is God in the English? Mm -hmm. yes. In the Hebrew, the original language, it was Yahweh. He's Yahweh. Who is he? Name to hold him to pronounce. Who is he? He creator of all things. He's Yahweh. He's Lord. He's ruler. He's Jehovah. The word Jehovah means the high of the highest. Yes, yes. You see how God just don't work? Yes. Just calling him God? Yes. No, the Hebrew said, no, 
When I say his name, I want to know, I want you to know he has a special attribute yes. about him. He has a character that defines him. And I'm going to tell you something, man, I, I'm so glad I, 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 I've learned how to study God's word because I'm going to tell you something. When I read the Bible and I see the word God, the first thing I ask myself now is, yeah. what's the Hebrew word? Yes, yes, yes. For that word. Amen. 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 So I said, why you ask that? Because I want to know what are the Jews trying to say about the G-O-D I know. Yeah. And then they're not just calling them God. No, they mean something deeper than just God. And so in Genesis chapter 2, verse 4, they would say Jehovah in the English, a Lord in the Hebrew, Yahweh. And what did Yahweh do? Read the story reading again for us, brother. Brother Leroy. Verse 4. Verse 4. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth. Now, now look what he says. We talk about the God of creation. We talk about the heavens and the earth. We talk about the Elohim that we talked about in Genesis chapter 1. These are generations of creation. Creation had a generation. Amen, somebody. Amen. In other words, it burnt other things. You got it? Amen. Read, brother. The heavens and of the earth, Read. they were created. Read. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heaven. Now, why, why did they talk this way? Well, if you go back to chapter 1, you start seeing the first thing he made was light. Wasn't it? Amen. Did that be light? That was light. Amen. They got to realize something, though. Something. Perplex me. The sun was made after. He said, "Let there be light." Right. Mm. Mm. Wow. Somebody say, "Well, what gave the light?" Yeah. Wow. And I tell you, I don't know what gave the light. All I know is the Bible say. Tell me what the Bible say. The Bible said, "He said that there be light and what? Yeah. There was light." Yeah. Amen. That's all I know. Don't ask me more than that. That's all the Bible tells me. Now I know the sun was amazing, but how do you know that? Well, hold Genesis chapter 2, Brother Leroy. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. What does it say? What does it say? That's what does it say? Somebody say, well, what, what gave the light? Mm. Him saying it. Yes. Amen, somebody. That's, right. That's what the light came from. Him saying it. Somebody say, well, where the sun was? Wasn't there yet? <laughs> Amen. Amen. That, 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 that should have been a <laughs> moment for you. Yes. Do that blow your mind? Mm -hmm. It just blow your mind. Yeah. Well, you tell no sun, man. Uh, 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 where was it like? Well, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, that might be one question you want to ask him when you make it to heaven. God, can you explain to me <laughs> yeah, right. what was the light you talked about? In that verse in Genesis, read on, brother, brother Leroy. Read from verse, verse five. Start at verse five. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. Read. And there was not a man to till the ground. Read. But there went up a mist from the earth. Okay, I'm, I'm, try, I'm, try, I'm trying to get to where the sun moved with me. Because there are up a mist from the earth. All right. And water the whole face of the ground. Read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And breathed. Well, no, no, you're in Genesis chapter 1. I'm in Genesis chapter 1. Oh, I'm in 2. Yeah, you're in 1. I'm on 1. Oh, yeah. I'll start at verse number 2. Verse 2. And the earth was without form. And void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Mm. And God said, Let there be light, mm -hmm. and there was light. Mm -hmm. And God saw the light, and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Mm -hmm. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament <laughs> in the midst of the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. Now drop down to verse 14. And God said, Let there be light mm -hmm. in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be 
for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for light in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God said, let them in the firmament of the heaven to give the light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the, over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, God saw that it was good. <coughs> and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Now y'all see he made the sun and the moon? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Day four. <laughs> Amen. 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 Now, so do ask me, Brother Aaron, uh, what, what gave light? I don't know. I just know the Bible said, and he said, let there be light, and there was light. Amen. I Amen. do know after that, though, he put the light in the sun. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. That was a book yeah, saying. Don't look. Look, yeah, don't, right. don't waste time arguing with people. Don't look. You ain't got time. Look, I've heard that about something that. Okay, then, if you make a sun and a moon for four days, then you really know where the light came from. He'll say it. <laughs> All you got to do is say it because guess what? Guess what he is? He's God. Yes. Amen. Amen. God don't need no son. All God got to do is set that be light. Amen. That's why he's called these different names in the Bible. Amen. Elohim. Elohim. Let us make me. In our name. Elohim. Spoke the world into existence. Amen. Genesis chapter 14, verse 8. So this is chapter 14, verse 8. I'm not going to take much time there because I got two more points to make, and then I'm going to take my seat. Do you know God? How you know him? Oh man, when the Jews talked about it, they talked about it personally. Oh, when the writer, the writer, when Moses talked about it in Genesis, Moses said he's Elohim. When Moses talked about it in Genesis, Moses said he's he's Yahweh. And Moses talked about it in Genesis chapter 14, verse number 18, excuse me. Moses called him El Elion. El Elion. Guess who he was? The Lord Most High. Yes. Yes. There's no one higher. He's the Most High. Oh, you might be high, but he's more high. Mm -hmm. So I said, don't say more. Well, you understand? Yeah. I say, but I say more. More. Yeah. Yeah. He's Most High. That's where he is. And that story is a story of when the kings of that day went to fight. And Abraham joined himself with a king. And when Melchizedek, the high priest, began to talk about God, he said, he's the most high. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That was some G-O-D, but he's capital G-O-D. He's most high. He ain't just high, he's most high. Yeah. Amen. 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 He ain't just up there, he way up there. Amen. Amen. He's most high. Yes. In other words, nobody <laughs> can compare to him. That's, no. right. That's who he is. No comparison. Nobody. Amen. No, I, I like my wife to think of that about me. <laughs> you know, he's the best husband. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Amen. Now I know sometimes I might not act like it, but I, I don't want to take that. Amen. 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 And I know she wanted to take the same about her. Oh, she's the best one. Yeah. Amen. 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 Most, it ain't just regular, he's just regular. He just somebody standard. He's about the standard. Amen. He's most high. Amen. Genesis 15 and 2. Genesis 15 and 2. Got one more, then I'll be kicking my seat. Do you, do you know God? How you know? Him? How, how you know? Him? How you know? Him? I say, what do you mean? How I know? Him? I want you to know for every listen, listen. What you going through? Anybody going through something? Yes, Lord. Anybody going through something? Yes, anybody going through something? Raise your hand. You going through something? Let me tell you, sir. If you going through something. I guarantee you there's a name in the Bible yes, that qualifies God to take care of your problem. Yeah, yes, so. You hear what I just said? Yeah. So many just say, God, no, that's not good enough. 
And I'm gonna show, so I'm gonna show you one. Listen, listen, every word I've showed you is the kind of God that God possessed that gave the children of Israel hope because that's the kind of God he was. Who is the God of ma 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 majesty? Yeah. The God of creation. That's why you can say let there be light and there was light because that's the kind of God he was. Mm. Yes. Most high. Yes. Or he ain't just standing. He knows that G-O-D, capital G-O-D. He's capital G-O-D. Yes, Most high. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now that, now that says something about how you need to approach him. If he's the most high God, that's how you need to approach him like the most high. God ain't your buddy like that. You know, at, at, at Abbey Christian University, that, that was, we had chapel every day. You know, we came together, we sung songs, we prayed, and they gave us a little food for thought as we went to classes. I'll never forget one young man got there and prayed, and here's how he prayed. What's up, God? What? My first class I got to was 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians that I was taking in school. Boy, my teacher went crazy. Here's how, here's how he said, y'all heard that fool in chapel. I said, ooh, we call that boy a fool. Ooh, no. But he was a fool. You never address God was the God. Who you think God is? Amen. He's the most high God. He deserves your most high praise. He don't serve you acting like he, he, God, you know. Let me give God some death. No! God's bigger than that. And boy, he was so mad. That's all he talked about the whole class. We didn't even do it first. We didn't do another no, 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 our lesson. He was just, he was, <laughs> that threw him, man. He, he was just throwing. And I'm so glad he was throwing, because I was throwing too, but I, I couldn't say nothing. So, boy, when he started talking about that, I smiled. I said, yeah, get him. Get him, get him, get him. Because I wasn't taught about God like that. I was always taught that God is worthy of worship. Anything worthy of worship, amen. I don't put on my level. Now, y'all hear what I just said, huh? God ain't on, you, on your left. God understands what you're going through. But don't get it twisted. God ain't on your level. God deserves your praise. Amen. When he taught the disciples how to pray, he said, Our Father, yes. which art in yes. heaven, hallowed, holy, yes. be your name. Yes. God, now, even though God woke you up and God slept with you all night, don't you be too familiar with God where you can say, What's up, God? Who do you think he is? Amen. You know, we kind of look at God, don't do some of the things God did on Testament times. Remember how God struck people dead quick? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm glad God didn't make that today. Lord have mercy. Amen, brother, 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 all will be in service. We don't want to hold it out with your brother Harold. <laughs> Man, I was so damn like, Lord, what did he do? <laughs> Trying to cheat the Lord? Hey, 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 When he had time for Elijah to die, God said, the chair from heaven come kill him, pick him up and take him back to heaven. Amen. 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 Now, I love him in the chariot ride. I can just see him, Elijah there. Woo! Woo! I'm leaving, I'm leaving here, I'm leaving here. Woo! And God came and got him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Genesis 15 and 2. And Abraham said, Read. Lord God, read. 
what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? Now, now what you're seeing is. And the steward of my house is this Eliza of Damascus. Now, what you're seeing is what, what Abraham uses. And Abraham oh, wait, says. Wait, I'm, I'm through with it. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. You got more holding me, though, the word. So I say, what? Was chapter 15. God had promised Abraham he'd be the father of many nations. But God made the promise Abraham had no children. Yeah. When God came to Abraham, God told Abraham, leave your family. Chapter 12. Go to a land I will show you. Now I want you to see what Abraham did. The Bible says Abraham left on God's word. Yes. Do y'all get what I say? Yeah. He left on God's word. Yes. Man. He didn't leave because God showed him something. He left because God said more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of us would have said, okay, God, show me something first. Right. <laughs> you know how we are. Yeah. I'm a move, but you gotta show me something first. Abraham left on a promise that God did not even fulfill. And guess what? Guess what God revealed it? After he was dead. Yes. But he moved because he trusted God. Why do you think Abraham is called the father of the faithful? He moved based on what God promised him, and he would not even see that promise fulfilled. Lord have mercy. But he moved. Man, that's faith. Yes. You thought you got faith? You ain't got faith in Abraham. God told him, through you, many they shall be blessed. In chapter 15, he didn't have a child yet. Wow. Okay, God. Uh, I know I, I need a child. Go back to verse number two again, Brother Leroy. And Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliza of the master. Read on. And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth aboard, abroad, and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thou see thee. Now, 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 now here's what he does. Come at Abram. Now, he's Abram now. He's not Abraham yet. <clears throat> Come at Abram. I made a promise to you. He said, let, let you and me take a look at the sky. Count the stars. Now, I don't know if Abraham did restore the stars, but he saw them. Mm. Boy, it's sure a story now. You got a lot of stars out there. Mm -hmm. God says, I promise you, mm. your descendants shall outnumber the stars. Mm -hmm. Now, Abraham, you talk about somebody born in your house. In your house. You talk about somebody born in your house. That's right. I'm telling you, I'm going to give you somebody from your own flesh. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I made that promise to you, Abraham, and I'm going to keep my promise. If Abraham, I'm going to show you that, I want to take you outside and see the stars. If you can count the stars, you'll count your descendants. Y'all got it? Y'all see? Amen. Verse number six, brother Leroy. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Now, what did you see, say? What did he do? And he believed the Lord. Wow. Didn't have a child, but yet the Bible says. He believed God. Somebody say, why are you, why are you missing that? Because that verse in the Bible calls God ordinary. You see how God just don't fit? So when Abraham called him Lord, and God didn't call him God, he called him ordinary. Brother Harold trying to 
live with the name God. No, I'm not. I'm going to try to show you when the Hebrews used it, in the various names that he was called, it meant a, di a different characteristic about who he was. Right. That's why I preface it by asking you, do you know God? Do you know it? Yeah. Just in chapter 16, verse 13. That's my last one. Then I'm going to take a seat. And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her. Well, I'll tell you what. No, let's do the story just. Let's go back to verse number one. Mm -hmm. Now Sarah, Abraham's wife, bear him no children. Okay, here's the story. Mm -hmm. Remember that promise God made? Yes. Remember how to talk about it? We talked about it in chapter 15? Mm -hmm. How? Remember y'all saw it? Y'all saw the story? So let me let me let know something. Sarah, Sarah's wife wasn't Sarah yet. What did the Bible says, Brother Aaron? She bagged him. No children. No children. But remember, God already told him, you can number the stars, you can number your descendants. That's right. Now you think the last thing you wanted to see? And Sarah bought him no children. God promised me, but Sarah ain't got pregnant yet. Hmm. Wow. Read on, Brother Leroy. And she had an handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said unto Abram, Behold, now the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee go into my maid. It may be that I may obtain children oh, by her. Lord have mercy. What's going on? Abraham or Abraham is about to mess up God's plan. Yes. yes. You, you see how fast it was? Chapter mm -hmm. so 15, he was saying, the Bible said, Abraham believed God. Did he just say that? Did he just read that? Abraham believed God. By chapter 16. Lord have mercy. Uh-uh. Lord have mercy. Man. Mercy. 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 Hey, Abraham, you forgot what you just said about God. Mercy. You forgot what attributes you gave to God? <coughs> you get an attribute about God and a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a Yet by chapter 16, just a few verses down, mm -hmm. Sarah ain't got pregnant yet. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine how Sarah feel it. I know what God said to Abraham. I know God told Abraham and me. We supposed to have a child, but it ain't came yet. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to have to step in. Well. And help God out. Mm -hmm. God don't need your help. Yeah. <laughs> you want to do what? Mm -hmm. no. You should have known better. 
You told him to do it. But now his wrong is up on you. Yeah. On him. What you told him to do? What's wrong? You want you him to say, no, baby, I don't think I will? <laughs> you don't give nobody the habit of beat you with. That's right. Oh, beat me. Now, let me say this. He should have. Yeah. Because it was just the previous chapter that the Bible says that Abraham believed God. Yeah. He believed God. But now it's belief. It's weak. We don't, brother. I have given my maid unto thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. Mm. The Lord judged between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it please, as it please thee. And when Sarai dwelt, parted with her, she fled from her face. Now I don't know exactly what Sarai, Sarai did. We don't know what she did. But the Bible says she does what she did. She caused this mess. Whenever you don't do what God said, you, you cause a mess. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you a question. Anybody here has, done, has not done what the Lord said? Mm -hmm. Have mercy. And you made a mess? Yes. yes. Anybody made a mess? Yes. Yes. Anybody made a mess? Yes. Yes. Someone made some messes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Read on, brother. Verse 7, and the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, whence comest thou? And whether wilt thou go? And she said, I plead from the face of my mistress, Sarah. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, and submit thyself under her hand. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for a multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael, mm -hmm. because the Lord hath heard thy affliction, and he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man, every man's hand against him. Mm. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her. Thou God sees me, for she said, Have I also heard here look after him, after see after, after seeth me. Wherefore the well was called Beeloria, Behold, it is between Kadesh and Beer. And Hagar bare Abram a son, and Abram called his son's name, which Hagar bare Ishmael. And Abram was fourscore and six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. Okay. Now I'm going to read verse 13 again. I'm going to read it again. <coughs> then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. <coughs> you are the God who sees. For mm -hmm. she said. <coughs> I also hear <coughs> see him who sees me. The word for God in that text is called El Ro. El Ro. El Ro means the God who sees me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. It's not asking you to know God. Now, 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 you have to see this story. She's a pregnant girl. She's not a really married. Although the Bible talks about the verses how she was given as his wife. That particular text means she was given to Bad's child. Not that her and Abraham got married. They didn't get married. No. That was a woman on the side. Mm -hmm. 
got it? Wasn't his wife. His wife gets mad when she starts teasing him because she's having Abraham's child. Abraham said, do whatever you will. He treated her harsh. She treated her harshly. She runs away from the harsh treatment. Yes. The Sarai given. Now I want you to know something. I'm so glad that an Egyptian girl got to know who God was. Amen. Oh, yes, she did. Yes, yes, Lord. Lord. yes. She there pregnant. Yes. Nobody take care of her. Amen. 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 Thrown out. Yes. Be by herself. The God's angel told her, you go back and submit yourself unto her. Yeah. In other words, God still got a plan for you. Yes. It's not the plan God had for Abraham, mm -hmm. but God still got a plan for you, little girl. Mm -hmm. You go back and submit yourself. Mm -hmm. And here's how she acknowledged God on that day mm -hmm. when she called out his name. Arrow! Mm -hmm. Arrow! Yes. The God who sees me. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Man, ain't you glad yes, sir. that the God you serve yes. Yes. Can be called the God of El yes. the God who sees me. Amen. Now I don't know how you view God. I want you to know something. Here's what I love about God. God can see me. Mm -hmm. Y'all heard I just say? Yes. Somebody said, "Brother, you being selfish." So I look. I, you do the same thing. You can see, see you too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad when I know Him. I know Him as the God who sees me. Amen. <laughs> so I said, "Why you say it, brother?" Because sometimes. We think God too busy to see us. Yes. Sometimes we think we're bothering God. God, I know I might be bothering you. I'll never tell God that. Amen, somebody. Amen. I don't care how busy God is, I'm still going to call on him. Amen. Because he's the God that sees me. Amen. And you'll be doing yourself a disservice not to call to him yourself. Amen. He's ill wrong. Yes. He's the God that sees me. Amen. Now I don't know about you, but sometimes I need God to see me. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I know He sees all of us. All the time. Let me tell you something. I had a lot of things in my life. When I was going through an operation, take that, take that, that, cast off, off my, my, my kidney. Guess what I wanted God to do? Oh, yeah. Hey, amen. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I went mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, to the hospital, but I wanted God to see me. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Right. Amen. But when our son died, I was in grief. I know my wife was in grief about grief. But guess what I wanted God to do? Yeah. I wanted God to see me. Yeah. Yeah, there are times I know God for God everybody, but that's sometimes I want God for me. For me, I need him. Amen. Amen. So what Hagar said is that God who sees me. Yes. I'm so glad that's in the Bible. Amen. And Amen. guess what, y'all? Guess what? Let me help. Now I should have given time all those names were mentioned. El Rowe. It's only mentioned once. Wow. Yes. Wow. Okay. But once is enough. That's yes. it. To let me know about his characteristics. He sees you. He sees you. El Ro is never mentioned again in scripture. All right. Man. Let's yeah. you, you Ain't that powerful? Yes. That's powerful, brother. 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 Hagar can feel good. The only time El Rose yeah. ever used in scripture is in Hagar's story. Yes. Mm. The Egyptian slave girl mm. they use. Woo! Mm. Well, that makes me shout. Amen. Because he's El Rose. <laughs> yes. El Rose. Oh, he's my God. I know he's your God, but he's my God. Mm. My God. He's my God, too. He's my El Rose. I got about 10 or 15 more to go through. Yes, all right. Because I asked you when I preface this lesson, I say, do you know God? Yes. He's more than just capital G-O-D. Yes, he is. He's all those things I say. Yes, man. And I'm inviting you to get to know every kind yes, of God. Yes, yes, man. Because I don't care what problem you got. Yeah. There's a name of God that fits. Yes, yes sir. No circumstance. Yes, man. Yes. Man, yeah. y'all heard just say it? Yeah. Jehovah Nisi, go find out what that means. Yeah. Jehovah Jireh. Yes. Go we'll see what that means. God has many names. I don't care what you're going through. God got a name.
that qualifies himself. Yes, sir. To take care of you. Amen. Yes. All right. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. You don't know him yet. <laughs> but you learn it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Why do you think Paul said? I can do all things all through Christ who gives me Amen. Amen. Why, why do you think the Bible says all things are possible yeah. with God? Amen. Because of who he is, it's all possible. If you're here, you're not a Christian, the greatest joy in the world is to become a child of God. Somebody say, how do I become a child of God? Let's get the gospel. We need the gospel. Yeah. If you say, confess Christ and be baptized. Look, look. I know you've heard me say this many times, and I, and I mean it. Every year I go on a journey to get to know God better. So I said, Brother, how long have you been in the church? A long time. Long time. But I can tell you, I'm still just learning who he is. Yes, sir. <coughs> just learning who he is. And he's growing my mind. God is growing my mind. If you're here, you need to come to a Christian, and you're not living up to the standard of God and having to, you need to repent and pray. If you're not a Christian, you come out, like I said, here in the gospel, being baptized. That's what this is your sin. You're here, you need to respond. Respond right now if you understand this sin. The song of meditation. Here you come. Give not to temptation, or to Yeah. 